Okay, this is rough. So we had a Chopper movie, and now we have a Zorro movie. That's what I'm getting out of this. I'm not against the Zorro movie, same with a Chopper movie. If you want more Zorro, you might think, okay, yeah, I'll watch this movie to get more Zorro. I was down for that. Except, this movie kind of has the same problem as the Chopper movie. We have done it yet again. In the Chopper movie, Chopper doesn't do any doctoring. In the Zoro movie, Zoro barely does any sword-ing. And that's weird. That is so weird to me. I wrote down a note one hour into the movie saying, Zoro has been on screen for five minutes this whole movie. And that's just messed up. We made a Zoro movie without Zoro, you know? I would expect the Zoro movie to pull out all the stops, right? We'd give him multiple fight scenes. We'd double down on the spectacle. But I don't think Zoro even says any of his attack moves out loud. The enemy of the movie says his attack moves out loud more. I'm, I'm still processing that decision. So let's instead talk about the plot of the story. On a random island, there is a magical sword. Swords always had some kind of unexplainable magical element to them. But this sword goes really hard into one extreme. It's a sword that is capable of affecting people's minds, stealing their lifespan, shooting fireballs, throwing fire things, and making whoever uses it pretty much evil. <laughs> and that's weird. This sword is not a sword. And that will make it really divisive. This is a movie that doesn't feel like it exists in the world that we have set up. If you're okay with that, you might still enjoy aspects of this movie. If you're not okay with that, it is going to be a really hard sell. This movie, while technically being a Zoro movie, is more about this side character, Saga, who used to be buddies with Zoro. And one day Saga got this sword that is magical and does not sword things. And now Saga wants Zoro to do something evil, like steal this MacGuffin. And Zoro's like, sure, I'll help you because I knew you that one time. So they're trying to steal MacGuffins. And look, this is so weird, right? Like you can almost see the writing in this movie. There are orbs and they have magical properties given to them by the gods. And we'll get to that god part in a second. But in reality, they're just MacGuffins. You can pick up from a meta perspective why we would need these to exist. We need these so that Zoro could come in and look like the bad guy. And then we'll go steal them later because we're the good guys. It is very simple that way. So yes, in this movie, there are gods which physically have the ability to literally affect people. And it is an entirely new magic system that is exclusive to this movie. Up to this point in the story, the narrative has exclusively argued against this concept. Like this is right after Skypea. So then doing a full 180, it's a really big ask. You really have to be willing to accept that to then follow along with the rest of this premise. And if you don't like this premise or that new magic system, you don't have anything else to fall back on. There is no big spectacle in this movie. The fights are either lacking or they're okay and not much to complain about, but also not much to talk about. Like there's a fight scene between Zoro and Sanji and that could have been really cool, but then it just ends so fast. So why did we bring it up? And this movie doesn't have a lot of good character interactions. Like sure, Luffy and Usopp at one point get stuck in a cave and that's probably the saving grace of this movie. But it's pretty similar to Chopper's movie, which is that one of the main characters is missing. So a lot of the dialogue is exclusively about finding that character. Or, hey, isn't it weird that this character did something weird? Or, hey, I'm pretty sure this character is okay. We should believe in this character. And I just wanted more than that. So the actual main hook of this movie is going to be the side character, their civilization, which wasn't all that special visually in One Piece, especially after Skypea, and the new god slash magic system, which go against a lot of what One Piece has set up. That is a lot going against it, but hey, you can watch it. The main takeaway is that we could have done so much cool things with this movie, right? Like if you wanted a Zoro movie, we could have had a really good Zoro movie. Dead End Adventure arguably has better Zoro moments than this movie. And I just wish we focused more on Zoro, but instead we focus on this filler cast and not enough on our main guy. So this ended up being a Zoro movie where we didn't let Zoro shine. Oof. And the reason why I'm a little bit harsher on this movie is because 
I was kind of excited about it. The potential was there, you know? But hey, it, like if you want more Zoro, uh, go grab three kitchen knives and you'll probably enjoy that more.